going to start in terrain. We are going to click insert file. So we're going to grab that LAZ file. So we've got that. We're going to create our uh, tin. Also create our contours. We can add in that ortho if we'd like. And this time I'm going to do something different just for the, the sake of it. So if we had our own high res ortho that we wanted to use, we could add it in as a, a background image here. So I've already got the uh, image saved out from before. So if that wasn't one that we just downloaded using live maps, well, we could uh, add it in this way instead. Got that. Uh, I'm going to, I do want to have my streams and ponds features here. Um, in this case, I want them rather than just a visual aid to help me design manually. I'm going to add some costs associated with these features. So we're going to run that streams and ponds tool. And we are going to, uh, well, use that first tool in the optimization toolbox. And that is Path Explorer. So with Path Explorer, we want to tell the software, I want to go from point A to point B. So we could use a feature if we had a shape file or something, but in this case we don't. So I'm going to just draw in a feature. So and we'll get the kind of apples to apples side of it here. We want to go from there to there. We're going to configure this. So we want to, we'll go with the same design constraints that we used last time. So minimum radius of 100 meters. Uh, I'm going to set my grades. We've got plus minus 12. Uh, for this, I want to make sure my road starts being pointed in that direction and ends being pointed in that direction. So we're going to control our approaches. And I've got my unit costs here, but I'm going to add some construction zones. And in this case, the only construction zones I'm going to add are those uh, streamed and ponds features. I'm just going to say, well, other than just the cost of moving my dirt around here, we're going to have extra costs for uh, those. But these uh, construction zone features are, are pretty flexible. So you can use them to uh, well, account for all sorts of good stuff. So if there's an area that you don't want to go, you can add them in as a, a no-go area. If there is uh, an area that's going to cost more, you can add that. Um, if you want to keep your uh, alignment within a, a feature or within a polygon, you can use a, a no-go polyline uh, around the outside of your feature. But uh, yeah, in this case, I'm going to keep it simple. Just run with the, the streams, which I've said I have a, an average crossing cost of 2,500 bucks. So we are good to go. We'll hit OK. And it's going to think for a moment. So it's five, found five paths, still searching for what it thinks is the best solution given the parameters we've given it. And this is a great time to remind everyone, if you have a question, we are going to have lots of time today to be able to address them. So please, yeah, type your questions into the go to webinar question panel. You will remain anonymous and we'd love to answer them. And yeah, this uh, is taking, shouldn't take too, too much longer here, but it is narrowing and exploring a bunch of uh, different solutions and now it's saying well unlikely to improve further so we'll hit cancel 
and there we are. So we've got, well, five possible solutions. If we want to see how they're ranked, we can right click, select feature by name. And let's take a peek at this one here. So that's our cheapest. Oops. Given the well, parameters that we've run, so 85 versus 94, we are going to save this file. save it as something else just for the sake of having something else in there. Well, rather than uh, saving over the, the uh, train file that we just made and used. And we're going to switch over to location now. Once again. So again, doing this from front to back, uh, we could just add that into the, the previous example if, if we wanted to. But that front to back workflow, we're going to set this up. So in location, we're going to reference our train file. And here, now that we've got those other features that we'd like to use, rather than just starting with a, a single point, uh, I'm going to use well, that Path Explorer feature there. Some of this remains the same. We're going to add in our background. We're going to set our cross-section template to be what we'd like. Now, we've already talked about this. I know this is the one I want to use. I didn't even need to open that up. I could just gone assigned by range. So next I'm going to run our polyline to alignment tool. So this is a 3D polyline right now. We're going to switch it over to be a proper alignment. And we're going to Let's make a couple tweaks here. And this is one, we're gonna just adjust our approach there. So we're gonna add in an extra curve. So it was staying within that approach angle that we originally told it to, but we're gonna tweak that. And then same with here, uh, I'm just gonna adjust that to be a little closer to what I'd like. So lining it up and we can see what we're dealing with here. We can see while we're avoiding a lot of the, the gnarliness, um, but we're still gonna want a proper alignment for our, our vertical. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna tell this to sample. We'll set our design specs, which are already appropriate. We're gonna add a control point at the start of the alignment. And we're going to add a control point at the end of our alignment. And we are going to click process and run our optimization. Um, now, one thing to note here too, if we wanted to, well, have a design that didn't balance, we could add pits and waste sites. Uh, we could add a, a bunch of constraints like well, full bench sections or minimum fill sections. But this one, we don't need any of that. We're going to just keep it simple. So it's running through doing some sampling for us here.
So there we are. And we've gone from having a project with our cuts in the 6600 range to, oh, we're handing to that 4000 uh, cubic meter range. Once again, we can add in our pipes, which is the, the same as what we did in uh, uh, what we did in uh, the previous example. But here I'll do one more step and we are going to add in our documentation. So I'll set my page size to be whatever I'd like. Uh, we could build these out from scratch or we can I'll say, well, I want to use this plan over profile. Make adjustments if we have something like that where we get a little bit of the road uh, moved off the alignment. So we've got our plan over profile. We're going to add in a another one with our cross sections, and we'll configure this to control how frequently we're seeing those sections. So I want to go every 20 meters or anywhere that I've added a pipe. And there we are. And of course, we can uh, export it to a bunch of different digital formats if we'd like. So save as and change the extension to well, all sorts of different formats. So land XML, uh, CSV, um, DWG, shape, etc. So pretty, pretty easy to use, pretty easy to run with and uh, yeah, pretty fast and dynamic. And one thing I will just say here too is, of course, you're not stuck with any of this. If you decide, well, despite that being cheap solution, if I decide, well, I want to just raise this, well, you can, and it's still dynamic. So you can go with a, a hybrid approach rather than just a, a conventional, purely conventional approach or purely uh, uh, optimized approach. Thanks everyone.